Welcome back. So today we're going to do a really quick one on these two sets, which are actually the same set, just two different flavors of it. This is the Air Acoustics Cypher in the 3.5 millimeter version. This is the USB-C version, and we'll kind of talk about the differences, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about here. But for those of you unaware, this is kind of a quite affordable ear acoustic set that they came out recently. It's about $19 for this version. I think it's $25 for the USB-C version. But this one, you know, it's it has a non-replaceable cable, which is pretty odd. You don't see that all that often, but they were clearly targeting the more affordable market and kind of going on design. And again, it's got some lots of color variations. It's got a nice blingy faceplate. It comes with a nice case. So all of that is pretty uh, interesting, I guess. Uh, this one comes with essentially the same accessories. The only difference is now you're getting the USB-C version. So that was pretty cool. So we'll kind of slide these out of the way and we'll kind of jump into what, what really happened with this one. So as we can see from the graph, this one has you know a very, very typical vocal focus. This is like 15, 17 dB of ear gain. Yeah, I kind of had enough of those kind of sets. I think there are people who are into buying that will, will probably buy it for that reason. Everyone else, this isn't really a general purpose music listening tuning style. It's very much centered on monitoring and vocals and that's what 17 dB of ear gain is going to sound like. And whether it's Cypher or some other set, they all tend to basically just sound like vocals. So what was actually interesting about this particular set was in the blue, you can actually see this is the analog version, which was in the blue, and it has kind of that 17 dB of ear gain. What I noticed about the DSP version was there was a bump right there in the sub bass. And I said, huh, that's kind of interesting. I wonder if that's just kind of a weird variation between the two or what, what was really going on there. So I happened to take the USB-C version and plug it into Squig. And for those of you who were, who actually saw my TP35 Pro dongle thing and walk play videos, you'll sort of know that there's this coming wave of USB device bridging to Squig. And that's sort of what Jerome at Pragmatic Audio actually did. So I plugged in the USB-C version, plugged it into his Squig, hit connect to device, and magically the the actual EQ, the PEQ actually showed up. So the USB-C version of Cypher is actually walk play capable. It's a walk play design. You can plug it into the walk play PEQ. It works with the app, but it also works with Squig. So you can pull it up. And what you see was about a 3 dB bump at about 30 Hertz, I think was where it was. So I said, Oh, that's cool. So now I don't have to deal with this 15, 17 dB of uh, ear gain because I'm not really going to listen to that all that much. I will just use his PEQ and I will just make a nicer curve of something that I wanted to listen to and had some free time. So it kind of banged on this PEQ and it kind of looks like this in the red. So you take this sub bass heavy 17 dB of ear gain, which is only for vocals and turn it into kind of a long arc, full bass shelf, low ear gain, and it turns into a nice balanced set. And again, this is this was meant to be and I think I actually set it up there. It's a 10 millimeter ceramic dome, PU surround, non-replaceable cable, and it's that price. So it, it's not the, their best version of a driver. I wouldn't say this is anywhere near SPA or STA. It's a lower cost version of the driver. And this basically sounds balanced and nice, but it's definitely not a kind of a class leading driver that they just happen to stick in a, in a cheap shell. It's kind of a, kind of an okay driver, but you know, so you, you know, when you actually look at what that what that EQ did, and, and I kind of saved it out as Cypher with PW as the uh, extension, when you look at that on my squig, you'll actually see it's actually super close to Twilight. And again, this is not going to sound like Twilight, but it's balanced like Twilight, and it's a really nice bass curve. And my advice for anyone who actually picked this one up and you're into EQing it, be really careful about trying to EQ probably above 5k so these weird peaks are are more like 
coupler artifacts. It's just not really capturing the upper range all that well. So be really careful about trying to smash these peaks down to a, to a target and doing something with them. Just leave them as they are and kind of move them up and down. And you can kind of see what I actually did, kind of the same thing here. I just basically moved them down as opposed to trying to smash the peaks into a target of some sort. So this whole base shelf was basically redone to be a long arc. This whole ear gain was brought down to about 5 dB, 6 dB, and then just lowered the upper range and that kind of rebalanced everything. And yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So yeah, so th this set on its own, not all that interesting to me. I'm not going to listen to something that's 17 dB. That's This is built for a specific purpose. If you happen to pick up or want to pick up the Cypher because it's on sale or at a reasonable price, I would pick up the USB-C version, plug it into the WalkPlay app, feel free to redo their whole tuning because uh, it's okay. And again, I'll, I'll even say, like I said, this driver is kind of okay. It's not their nicest driver. Same thing on the dongle. Like, I don't think this is the nicest version of the WalkPlay DSP. It actually has some background noise. So again, I think this whole thing is priced appropriately at about $25. Not the best thing in the world, but kind of got the job done and it's enjoyable to listen to after I EQ'd it. So that is what I got on the Ear Acoustic Cypher. So thank you guys again for tuning in and I'll see you next time.